Hey guys, what's up? All right, um, so you guys had some questions in regards to how I actually host a website uh, and, and using Django. So I've actually stated this many times before, but I actually use Linode as a hosting option. So first things first, whenever you're getting started with actually getting your Django project in production, and this really doesn't just apply to Django, but probably any sort of stack that you're trying to run in production, you need to have a hosting company. So a hosting company is who you're going to pay money to to actually store your servers unless you're going to run it out of your house, which probably isn't a good idea since you're going to need solid state drives. You're going to need probably fire, security, and all kinds of other stuff to make sure it doesn't go down on you. Uh, Linode is actually a very cheap option. In fact, I'm going to put a link um, to the affiliate details in Linode. That way I get a free month's hosting if, if you guys go out and purchase this product. So you know, just be forewarned, I do make money on that um, if, if you do that, which I've actually never had one before, so uh, you would be my first. Um, anyway, that said, you need to actually have a hosting uh, company, and Linode is actually very cheap, so you can do 10 or $20, and, um, and that should be more than enough resources for, for most websites that you have. So here's hipsterco.com. This is actually, you're looking at a local version of this thing running, um, but the actual website is uh, located on the web. Let me go ahead and go to it real quick. So here is the, the website on uh, the World Wide Web. So I went ahead and I purchased the domain. I always go to godaddy.com to purchase the domains because it's very quick for them to actually update all the DNS records and everything. Um, so you can point the DNS name servers to Linode and then Within like a few hours, your website is up and running once you have your server set up. One thing I do want to mention is that when you do get your Linode account set up, you're going to get a blank server. You're going to have to actually determine your flavor of Linux that you want to run. Um, so there's like uh, CentOS and Fedora and Ubuntu, and you just use Ubuntu 14.04 if you don't know what you're doing. Um, and you could probably use Ubuntu, yeah, use the Ubuntu 12, uh, 14.04. Uh, but you can also go to this website here. This guy is a Stanford grad, I believe. He uh, he did a, a pretty awesome job trying to like uh, show the basic steps of getting the server pr pr uh, pr provisioned and all that stuff whenever you get your first Linode account. So it's going to walk you through installing Python, setting up your uh, sudo user for your Linux account and all this other stuff. So definitely follow this step by step. It's going to be a, you know, a pretty big bitch to get it set up, but once you do, you should be good to go. Um, just follow this step by step though, and then um, and then your Linode will be pretty much set up. You're still going to have to run into the problem with the actual virtual private host and all that stuff. Um, so with Django, I want to mention. Let me actually show you guys GoDaddy real quick too. So if you log into your GoDaddy account, once you set up a GoDaddy account by your domain name, there's going to be this name server settings when you go in to manage it, and you can see hipstercode.com, and I'm pointing them to the five Linode name servers. So I'm telling GoDaddy, whenever this domain is requested, just forward it over to Linode for handling. And then in my Linode account, once I provision the server and everything, I need to update the DNS settings inside Linode. So inside the Linode panel here, I have all these different domains that I own and stuff like that, but if I were to... Um, add a new, all you got to do is go to say uh, add a new, add a domain zone, uh, and then inside here just give your domain name without the www, then you can give whatever sort of email address you want it to show up in case it ever goes down, it'll have your email and stuff on there. So that's that, that's all you then need to do with Linode for the moment. The next two things you're going to need, you need FileZilla. FileZilla is this uh, this item right here, but you're going to want to download if you're on Windows or basically anything other than uh, Linux because you, you need to have, it's a GUI system that allows you to be able to upload files and documents and directories and all that stuff to your uh, to your web server. So definitely get, uh, get FileZilla it's for file trans, it uses file trans protocol, but you can uh, download this thing, download the client for Windows or Windows only, whatever you want. Uh, but then once you have it up, um, you're going to see something like this. And really, it's just your your files on the left-hand side. And you can just – and then on the right-hand side is going to be your server once you connect. But you have to give the right host and username and password and all that stuff. And then you can connect to it and, uh, and upload files directly to your server. 
Next, you're going to need this thing called PuTTY. And uh, PuTTY is, if you're using Windows, it allows you to use a Linux uh, command post to, it allows you to use a Linux command uh, to actually interface to your, uh, your Linux server. So if I log in here, then I could go ahead and log in through PuTTY. And now I'm logged in here. So let me make this bigger. Could go to change settings, appearance, change the font. I'll make it really big. All right, so if I then go into, after, if you follow those uh, those settings, you're gonna end up having uh, Apache 2 and Nginx installed on your machine. I use a combination of Apache 2 and Nginx to handle any sort of um, domain setups and everything like that. So basically, Nginx is used as a what's called a reverse proxy, so it listens on port 80. And all requests is coming to hipstercode.com on port 80. But what it does is it sifts out any sort of static content. And static content is JavaScript, CSS, images, and, um, and those basic files. And it will actually render those because it does a better job of rendering those faster than Apache. And then it's going to, because it's a reverse proxy, it's going to send anything that's a request for uh, um, items that are not matching that description. It will send them directly to Apache 2. For further handling. So basically Django is running on Apache but also uses Nginx for static content. So if I looked at uh, PuTTY I can show you that if I go to uh, CD, I'll go to an ETC, uh, let's just go to Nginx first and I'll say sites available. There is a sites available folder. In fact, let me go back one directory. If you look at Nginx inside here, there's a sites available right here. And then there is a sites enabled. So you really just need to symbolically link. Um, so you should just have to go into like one of these sites available. And then if you're adding um, one of these domains, like so let me show you. If I go into pseudo nano hipstercode.com. You can see this is actually called my virtual, uh, my virtual host. So Nginx can handle multiples, but you can see it's listening on port 80, and, and it shows you the root directory where where some of this stuff is actually located, which is actually a temporary directory for right now. Uh, but then here is the actual reverse proxy part of this, where it's it passes it to localhost 8080, and that's where Apache 2 is going to be listening. Um, but you can see I also have SSL enabled for this site, so I show it the um, so Nginx can handle SSL traffic and all that stuff. But that's what this is. This is a virtual um, a virtual host is what it's called in Nginx, and also Apache 2 is the same way. But that way, when you have a Linode account, you only have you only have one domain, but you can have multiple sites on that domain by having mul multiple virtual hosts inside your Nginx sites available and also Apache 2 sites available. So if I go back a couple directories here, I can do the same thing on Apache 2, and I'll say sites available. And if I look inside there, here's um, some of these websites I own. So let's look at pseudo nano hipstercode.com.config. And then here, there's a lot more that's going on here, but you can see that it listens on uh, port 8080. Um, also, it's pointing to the directory where the actual project resides. For right now, it's under post, and that's because it's temporary because, long story, but basically hipster code was more of an afterthought compared to something that I already had running. If you're using a virtual uh, environment in Python, then your WSGI script alias has to actually point to where the WSGI file is located. But then this, um, yeah, so that's where the WSGI file is located, but then this daemon process here is actually saying um, that you need to give it the Python path, and the path is actually going to be where your virtual environment is installed. So, so you can see 
that it goes to Python 3.4 in my environment, which is my virtual environment where this project is located right now. Um, so that's a relatively complex thing. And then you have just the error log. But really, that's essentially it. You restart Apache. You restart Nginx if everything goes well. And then any sort of request that gets made from GoDaddy to Linode is going to hit. Uh, it's going to look for your uh, your names, your your DNS record for, you know, when you add that slave record. So it's going to say, oh, hipsterco.com. It's going to use Apache or Nginx on port 80 to request hipsterco.com. And uh, Nginx is going to find it because there's a virtual host for hipsterco.com. It's going to handle the static content. It's going to redirect everything else to Apache 2. Apache 2 is going to be like, oh, okay, I'll handle it. Apache 2 needs to know which version of Python you're using, which is, you know, like I said, that's because it's a virtual environment. It wanted to point directly to uh, where the virtual environment was installed on the, the file system. And then it also wanted to um, to know where the WSGI file is, right? Because WSGI is the Python protocol of how Python works on the web. So it needed to know where all that stuff was. So, guys, that's in a nutshell how everything is set up and um, like I said it's a it's a pretty big pain when you're doing it for you know for the first time um, but it's a pretty ideal way of running a Django website especially if you're just um, you know typical traffic website where you're you're you know maybe get a couple hundred thousand people a month or so uh, but let me know if you have any questions I know that was a lot of information I've had this request before and I just thought I'd make a video just kind of giving you guys an overview of how all this stuff actually does come together when I host it in the real world all right, thanks for watching. Have a good day. Please subscribe. Bye.